Today I'm going to show you how I cut and how I fry catfish. And I'm actually going to fry the catfish several different ways. So first I have my catfish fillets. These are fresh farm-raised catfish fillets. And you can certainly use frozen, but as with most things, fresh is always better. Some people may prefer to fry the whole fillet. I've seen people cut catfish fillets quite a few different ways. Sometimes they'll take it and just split it in half. I've also seen a lot of people cut it just kind of into pieces crossways. I prefer to cut it into strips of roughly the same size. So I'll start by working at the end of the fillet closest to the rib cage, and I will cut it opposite to that. And I'll cut it into roughly equal strips at an angle about like this. So this gives me pieces that, like I said, are really close in size. You're never going to get it exact, but these are close enough. Now I have all my catfish cut up into very nice strips. And to do the frying, I'm going to be using one of these Presto deep fryers. Of course, you can fry in a pot on the stove. And my preferable way to fry is actually outside over a propane burner because it maintains the temperature a little bit better. But for the most part, I do like this Presto fryer. So I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oil to... 350 degrees. I'm just using regular vegetable oil. I actually think shortening gives fried foods a little bit better taste, but any oil will work. Shortening, vegetable oil, canola oil, peanut oil, or anything like that. I have two different breadings that I'm going to use on different batches of fish. I have this Louisiana crispy fish fry, which has more cornmeal in it, and I have the Zatarans New Orleans style fish fry, which is really a corn flour. So they will give me different results as far as the breading on the fish. The first way I'm going to fry catfish is I'm going to use the ice water method. And for this you take a bowl with some water and ice and you put some of your catfish strips inside. I'm just going to move these around a little bit. I'm going to let this sit for just a couple minutes so I can get the strips as cold as possible and that's going to help the fish fry stick to the catfish strips. Okay, it's been a few minutes. So next I'm going to take my catfish strips out and I'm going to lay them on a clean towel. And I want to get the excess moisture off of the catfish strips but I don't want to completely dry them out. Next, I'm going to use the cornmeal based fish fry and I'll throw these in. Put a lid on the container and shake them up. You don't have to do them this way. You could actually just run them through the cornmeal as long as you're sure that they've gotten a good amount of breading on the catfish strips. My oil is heated up, so I'll put my catfish in the basket and just try to shake off any extra fish fry before I drop them in because I don't want to get the oil too saturated with excess fish fry. And I'll drop those in. Now these may take five to six minutes to fully cook through. You definitely don't want to overload your oil, especially if you're using an electric fryer because it can't recover quite as well. And if you overload your oil, your fish can get greasy. Sometimes the fish fry doesn't stick to it properly. And you want your fryer to be able to recover back to whatever temperature you have it set at pretty quickly. And the five to six minute cooking time is not necessarily exact, but I'm going to cook it until most of the bubbles stop and the fish is floating at the top. If you undercook your catfish, it'll still be kind of wet and translucent. And once it's done, it'll be a little bit drier on the inside and the fish will be white. Okay, it's been about six and a half minutes, and I think the catfish is ready to go. So let me drain a little bit of the excess oil off of it. And I'm going to put it on a, a sheet pan that I lined with paper towels. So here's the first batch of catfish, and you can see using the ice water method, it gives it a nice thin batter. It's not too thick if you don't like a real thick batter and let's check the inside and it's nice and white and done and like I said that was about six and a half minutes 
So this first batch looks really, really good. Another way that I like to batter my catfish is using mustard and more specifically a mustard water combination. So what I'll do is I'll take some mustard and put it into a container. And I use roughly a 50-50 mix of mustard and water. So I add in a little bit of water. And then I'll mix this up. And I also want to mention, I'm not seasoning anything here because both of the fish fries that I'm using is already pre-seasoned. So I'll put my catfish into my mustard water combination and just move that around. Be sure it's coated really nicely. And for this, I'm going to be using the corn flour based fish fry. And I'll do the same thing, put the lid on my container and give it a good shake. And you can see the mustard really helps the fish fry stick to the catfish strips. And the reason that I didn't use this with the cornmeal based fish fry is because a combination of the mustard and the cornmeal can make a really thick crust on the fish. Now, if you'd like it to be really, really thick, then you would probably want to use the cornmeal here. Put some more catfish strips back into the fryer, being sure to shake off any excess. One thing I like to do while the fish is frying is just give it a shake every now and then. And this does two things. Number one, it helps prevent the fish from sticking and it helps move the oil around since the oil on the bottom is gonna be a little bit hotter than the oil on the top. Okay, I think this batch of fish is done. And I fried these for about eight, just over eight minutes, but these pieces were also a little bigger than the last batch and there was a, another piece or two in here. So there was a little bit more fish in this batch. So here is the first batch of fish where I use the ice water and the cornmeal based fish fry. And here is the second batch where I use the mustard and water and the corn flour based fish fry. So with the mustard and water, you're definitely going to get a little bit thicker crust on the fish. Next, I'll be using a simple egg wash to coat the fish with. And I'm going to fry two more batches. One with the egg wash and corn flour fish fry and one with the egg wash and corn meal fish fry. Okay, I'll do about six pieces in each. And this egg wash is just about half a cup of milk and two eggs. Let me shake that around. So next I'll put my fish in the fryer and earlier I had the basket out and I was just laying the fish in the basket and I know someone's going to say that that might cause your fish to stick together or whatever you're frying but as you can see even placing it in the basket and then placing the basket in the oil did not cause the fish to stick together but I would say just do it however you want. On this one I'll just drop the fish directly into the oil. All right, the fish is done, so let me pull that out. Now I'll fry some fish using the egg wash and the cornmeal fish fry. Okay, the last batch of fish is done, so let me get that drained and pulled out of the oil. So here's a little bit better view of all the fish that I fried today. The ice water with the cornmeal, which is definitely the thinnest, lightest um, breading on any of the fish. The mustard and water batter with the corn flour based fish fry. Egg wash with the corn flour based fish fry. And egg wash with the cornmeal based fish fry. Of course, this is not the only way to fry catfish. There are plenty of other batters and coatings that you can use. Some people even prefer to use straight cornmeal as a coating. But these are just some ways that I like to fry catfish. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.